Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, wherever you are from around the world, live from the CK12 World Headquarters. I'm Carl, and I'd like to welcome everybody to this community-contributed and non-STEM content on the CK12. Hi, everyone. I'm Lindsay, and before working for CK12, I taught high school English and video production for 10 years, so I'm really excited to be one of the instructors on today's webinar, because even though I didn't teach a math or science subject, there are many ways that I could have been using the CK12 platform to make teaching easier and help students with their learning. So I can't wait to give you non-STEM folks some ideas, and then for all of you math and science teachers who've joined us, we're also going to be showcasing the community contributed area of our site, which some of you haven't really explored yet. So now that the program's underway, we're not going to bore you with all the details of everything you have to do, but the key thing we want to remind you of is when using the chat window, please broadcast to all panelists and attendees. This still is a little challenging for some people. Even in today's chat window, I can see half the things are just to the panelists. So if we can make sure that you click down to all panelists and attendees, everyone gets to see your lovely comments instead of just the four of us in the studio here. So that would be great. Um, in addition to that, we have our assignment that goes along with this. And, oh, sorry, before that, we have the resource page that is available for this that we've put together to kind of um, guide you during this webinar and also afterward. So make sure that you um, access that using the tiny URL right there. So, um, our participation in this program is outstanding. We have over 1,800 people from 90 countries and growing more every day. I saw today for this session, we Istanbul and Australia. It's very exciting. So, um, in fact, we'd like to learn a little bit more about you before we get on with this webinar with some different questions that we've not been asking. So, we're going to go ahead and launch a poll with these three questions right now. So the first question is, what non-STEM subject area are you hoping to learn more about this webinar? And choose that. F second question is, what areas are you most interested in today? And you'll have a couple options there. And finally, a little geographic question, because I, I love my geography. Which part of the world are you in right now? So I'll pause for a few seconds and let you finish this poll, and we'll have Lindsay sing while we're waiting. <laughs> Uh, that would be a scary thing, but uh, we are challenging you guys now. I think three questions in a poll is the most that we've attempted so far. And we're just curious because, again, we sit in this room and we see you guys posting in the chat window, but we would love to know where you're from. And then um, the breakdown of um, subjects of, of what you might be interested in learning about today. So... Um, a few people are saying they don't see the poll. Are people answering the poll? Okay, people are answering the poll. So sometimes that happens if you have a pop-up blocker through your web browser, um, it, it shows up as a pop-up. So if you don't see it, no big deal. Um, it's, it's an anonymous submission. So um, we're just looking for what the masses have to say. Um, how are the results looking, Carl? You know, we're looking good here. We still have a number of people that haven't answered. So with just a few left, um, we'll give about 10, five more seconds. Uh, yes. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and end this poll now. And we can see here, language arts is our big winner of subjects here, non-STEM subjects, 42% of you are interested in that. Up next is social studies, then um, career technician education, uh, and foreign languages, arts, and physical education are both um, represented, are all represented there. Um, in the second question, what areas are you most interested in today? Um, the big winner there, 55% of you responded, finding community contributed content on the website. Let's stop reinventing the wheel and use stuff that other people have already done. I agree, and we're going to show you that. Uh-oh, we're already getting some comments that we left out some areas on our map. You're right. We should have had an other area. Yes, we've got, we should have had Central America, said one person in the, in the window. And then another person just said that um, they're in the middle of the Atlantic right now. So um, not, not one of these. Wherever you are, um, thank you so much for joining us. And um, again, for, for you folks who are STEM subjects, hopefully you're still going to see a lot of relevant things about creating a book from scratch and um, finding community con contributed content.
Can we delve a little deeper into I'm in the middle of the Atlantic? So Vanessa, I'd love to know more information about this. Are you on a cruise ship? Are you on a sailboat lost at sea? Let us know. We, um, inquiring minds do want to find out more. Bermuda is the answer to that, um, is what she said there. So um, another thing, just a quick shout out um, uh, for our Twitter users. Of our team's checking Twitter, and I know educators aren't always, you know, the most avid Twitter users or tweeters, um, but we love seeing your messages coming here. So here's just, here's just a few that we're liking. Um, people who are working on getting CK12 certified, um, using clicks and sims with Schoology, that's exciting yet. Um, I like Jay Lee. If you haven't seen the possibility CK12 certified yet, you're not seeing all the options. Cool to see some free resources that do what the big companies are doing. Definitely something that is about access for all. Um, we love that. Yes, we are small but mighty. Um, departments diving deep into OER. Um, some other folks, uh, you know, replying to each other, giving giving ideas for content to use, like a great demonstration of molecular motion as thermal energy. And then um, what Bridget included a, a shot here of her of her simulation. She's at the Schoology Next conference. Schoology's a, a, a partner of ours and uh, multitasking and doing both at the same time. Um, again, just thank you to everyone for joining us. We know you're taking time out of your out of your day, out of your time off from teaching to to be here. So. Um, we really, really do appreciate it. Um, okay, I think let's go ahead and get going here. Um, it is interesting to see, you know, what subjects you guys are interested in. Um, as most of you know by now, CK12 has the most coverage for STEM content, specifically middle school and high school math and science. But our platform can be used in a variety of ways for a variety of subjects. So specifically in today's webinar, we'll be covering the following topics. We'll be talking about non-STEM CK-12 content. Um, we're gonna show the schools page um, for those of you who want to see what others are doing around you in all subject areas. We will talk about finding community contributed content. I will show you how to create a flex book from scratch and we'll review a little bit about writing your own questions. I think it's helpful to remind everyone about CK12 Foundation's main priority when it comes to developing content for our users. One of CK12's mission is to advance learning of math and science with world-class multimodal free customized con curriculum and content and assessment on a digital platform that will lead to personalized instruction and reduced workload for teachers. One question we get asked all the time if there are plans to extend extend our content to offer more non-STEM areas? The short answer, no. But the good news is we have a comprehensive coverage for middle school and high school math, and we've started building out more elementary content, such as our K-5 science book. Most of the initiatives that CK tells focus on enhancing our math and science content to personalize learning for students. Our steady growth in the object, other subject areas is thanks to teachers like you who are creating content on our site and sharing it with others from around the world. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you in this webinar is the non-STEM content that CK12 has available for you, that we have put together, curated um, for you. And so on our homepage, this is what you see when you are looking to browse different subjects. You will see a few English branches and we have writing and we have spelling under there. And you'll also see a few additional subjects under more for history and for health. On our browse page, you'll also see an area for user contributed and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what that section is later. Some of the flexbooks available in these different subject areas include, um, for writing, we have a common sense composition book, a journalism book, the Glyphata method, which is an essay writing um, model. We have spelling, a basic speller for students and for teachers. In history, we have US history source book for advanced and basic um, students classes. For health, we have the health core skills for a healthy me and teen health literacy. So these are CK-12 books, different from our community contributed that we'll be talking about in a bit. So unlike our math and science concepts that come with a lot of different modalities, you've been hearing about this in other sessions, how we have all this related content. We have reads, we have clicks, videos, practice, 
real world applications. Um, most of our non STEM subjects just have flex books. Um, you're not going to find all of the other curated resources. Spelling is a bit of an exception because it has adaptive practice questions as well. So that doesn't mean that we don't have interdisciplinary concepts that would work well in your subject area. For instance, oh, he's, he's bringing them all in at once. I want them to digest each one and savor it. <laughs> back arrow, back arrow. There we go. Um, so we've been... If you attended our interactives webinar, we had the first one this morning, um, you've seen what our plicks are, um, bite-sized interactives that really engage students. Um, our interactives team makes an effort to keep non-STEM subjects in mind when creating their plicks. So depending on your subject, we might actually have a plicks that would be perfect for your area of study um, and some that lend themselves to cross-discipline uh, cross units. For instance, um, this one that you're looking at right now um, is actually talking about President Jefferson's octagonal home. So this is a bit of a crossover of, you know, the math and the social studies. Um, in the area of art, um, this is one that's showing angles and lines in a perspective drawing. Um, again, students are going to be manipulating something in this and answering questions. For fashion design, um, this is one that's on the houndstooth pattern. Uh, for cooking and home ec, um, dimensional analysis, working with teaspoons and cups, milliliters, and even in the area of photography, stem and leaf plots and histograms. So again, don't be afraid to search our site. Um, you know, we have that search bar. You can type in a, a concept on all sorts of things and we might have something, you know, a read, a lesson, or even something that's interactive and engaging for your students to enjoy. Okay, I'm gonna go live to the site right now and start a demo. So share my screen. And here we are on the CK12 homepage. Um, what should we do first? Uh, if you scroll down here, we're asking you, what are you looking for today? And we categorize our content. Um, this is similar to what you would find under the, if you press the subject menu. Again, explore would send you to different resources, different product offerings. So if you knew you were looking for a Flexbook 2.0 or you knew you wanted a simulation or a Plex, you could always navigate from the explore menu. But I'm gonna take you from a browse page here. And so when we browse and go down to the English category, um, let's look at writing, for instance. So here we have three books on our writing bookshelf. Um, you guys who, are, who have been seeing all the excitement about Flexbooks 2.0 um, and, and what that platform has to offer, you'll notice that most of our non-STEM content has not been converted over to a 2.0 book yet. So when I open up Common Sense Composition, it's gonna look a little bit different from the things we've been demoing. We're telling you, hey, 2.0 has arrived. Um, we're slowly converting all of our books to be on that new platform. Um, but what I wanna show you here is that when you're trying to figure out, okay, what is this resource? We do have a details tab. And when you select the details tab, you can learn more about who the author is of this book and you know, who edited it, um, you get information about when it was created and when it was last modified. Um, these details are probably particularly interesting when you're going to look at community contributed content because you might be excited about a book and then notice that it hasn't been mo modified since 2010 and might think differently about how current that resource is. So in our materials, if you want to see the author, if you want to see um, who contributed, this particular book, Common Sense Composition, was contributed by a group of authors at San Jose State University. And that's how we acquired the content and they've made it available for you. Um, so a couple reminders, I can always steal this URL, I could copy and paste this URL and send it to a colleague or give it to my students and they could start accessing this book right away. Or I could choose to press customize. Um, this works on our original Flexbooks or our Flexbooks 2.0. And I could shuffle chapters, I could make a few changes, and I can um, get that URL that's now customized out to colleagues as well. So I'm going to go back to the home page. I like to go up to the logo here to get back to the home page. And I told you spelling's a little bit different. When I click on the spelling page, it's gonna take me to our concepts tab because we've broken our spelling down into a bunch of different concepts. 
And this has, uh, this will take you to a read and we have adaptive practice on it. So you could search, um, you know, you could expand all to see the hierarchy of what we offer in spelling or over here on our Flexbooks textbooks tab, that's where you could access um, our basic speller student materials and our basic speller teacher materials. All right, I think for a lot of you, as you're thinking about the subjects that you teach and maybe some of your specific units during the school year, um, don't be afraid to use our search bar. Um, it is up there. This is, this is what students are used to now. They're, they're not using a, a table. Of, they're not using an index or a glossary. They're, they're searching with the search bar. So I'm going to type in um, the key phrase photography. And you'll see that we start to auto-populate some suggestions as I type. And when I come to my search results, it has shown 24 results for my phrase photography. And I can filter different options here. We can filter by grade, subject, or categories. Um, of these filtering options, I find categories most useful. If I know that I'm looking for you know, a video, I can filter by video. If I know I want a real world application, I can do that as well. Um, in our math and science areas, again, you guys are gonna see hundreds and thousands of resources in all of these different categories. That helps you get to where you're wanting to go quicker. Um, you can see uh, we label what these resources are. So this is going to be just a read on histograms and, and photography. And then this is labeled PLICS. This is the PLICS that popped up on the screen earlier um, uh, talking about uh, photography. So um, if I also search, like say I want to search Jefferson, um, what I get again are, are some are some reads that are going to come up, and then this was a plix I was showing you earlier that was about about his house. So um, you're gonna see resources for most of what you end up searching for. So that was a rapid fire tour of what CK12 has to offer in other subjects, which I said is not as robust as as math and science. Um, and I'm going to stop and take a few questions before I start showing you our con community contributed content, which spans all subjects. So Carl, how are we doing in the Q&A? You know, the Q&A window is surprisingly quiet. Star has been answering some questions that are very specific, but we welcome you to type your questions in the Q&A window so we can um, hear, have a good little discussion here. So at this point, Lindsay, we are going to forge on. I like it. Okay, I think you're going to take back over the screen for a minute. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So if you can just wait two seconds, we'll get caught up here. You've noticed the sharing the screen thing takes a second. All right. So one of the things that you many users don't realize about CK12 is that a large portion of our site falls under what we call community contributed content. And this is the, a huge growth area for us as more districts are using open educational resources and using teachers to create and customize content instead of purchasing through publishers, you'll continue to see more and more non-STEM or even advanced placement, international baccalaureate, IGCSC, all these types of content on our site. Okay, so one of the best places I think to go when you're looking for um, books that schools and districts have created is from the schools page. So if you are on the home page, you do need to make sure that you're logged in as a teacher. Students see a slightly different home page and don't see the schools icon. So make sure that, that you're logged in as a teacher. And then one of your four explore circles should say schools. Um, you can go to this, or you can also go to ck12.org slash schools. That's a pretty handy shortcut I use a lot if you want the direct link. Um, and I know some of you have multiple windows open and you're doing this with me, and that's, and that's fine. Um, good test, actually, is that when you open up ck12.org slash schools, um, it should have an idea of where you are located. Um, uh, Sometimes I'm in Kansas and it thinks I'm in Texas. It just depends. I'm curious if it's working for you. But um, it, it's going to serve up to you content that is near you regionally. Um, and then from that drop down menu, you're able to explore from there. So here it knows that we're in California and it pulled up any books that schools have published and elected to put on the site and tagged to a specific school or district. Um, 
again, we would, we would love for everyone to start claiming their schools page so others can benefit from um, our resources, um, from your resources, actually. So to do this, from our schools page, think of an appropriate person to be the one in charge of claiming your school. This is often a technology coordinator, um, sometimes a curriculum director or some other administrator, and they have the option to claim your school on CK12. And if you wanna do that, you're gonna fill out the following information. Um, this is just a little template for you. And we have a short link, I think, Carl, um, that's a tiny URL. We love tiny URLs. Um, some of them are stickier than others, but the tiny URL, CK12 Claim School, that's what you could use or you could pass on to somebody else in your school or district to get your book on this page. So like I said, you're probably only seeing a smattering of books. We have, uh, what are we at? I'm going to say this wrong, but 230, 40,000 customized books on our site. Um, but not everybody has elected to publish them and or go beyond publishing and put them on the schools page. So this is, you have to claim your school and you have to decide that you want to share it with the world. Um, but it's really exciting, um, the people who have chosen to, done, to, to, to do this. Um, you sometimes hear us talk about El Paso in our webinars, and that's because they're one of our original partners and they're doing amazing things in El Paso. Um, they have really high quality community contributed and non-STEM books that they've made available for anyone to use. So El Paso Independent School District in Texas, um, they committed to going open and they systematically create new flex books with teams of teachers, um, writers, and editors. So this is an example of what their schools page looks like. Um, you can see on their school page, if you go to Texas, that they have all sorts of books. They have AP US history, they have AP government, macroeconomics, sociology, world history, and so many more. Um, I worked with some of their teachers earlier this year and they were writing English books, Spanish books, and other social studies books. Uh, Tim Holt, who's one of our friends who leads this initiative in El Paso, um, he, we're going to play a quick video clip of him real quick because he speaks to the CK12 partnership and why he thinks it's so important to share the resources that you create with others. One of the neat things about open education resources, Creative Commons, CK12, is that when you create something, it doesn't just stay with you. You actually have to put it back up for others to share. And so whatever you create becomes part of the larger community. So all the textbooks that EPISD has created are up online for anyone to use. And we encourage people to use them. We encourage people to give us feedback. You know, we, we know that we can always do a better job. And if there's a school district that wants to use our textbooks, please, please do. We actually have been, we have been contacted uh, over the years by many uh, school districts that are interested in saving money. They're interested in open education resources. They're interested in having control over their, you know, I think it, Apple calls it controlling the whole widget, you know, from beginning to end. And so when you control the curriculum, when you control everything, including the textbook, you're in control of the whole widget. And, uh, and that's something that CK12 allows you to do. And EPISD is more than willing to share our processes. We're more than willing to share our books. So uh, that's, that's, that's part of the deal with CK12 is that you're sharing uh, what you create. If you're interested in connecting with Tim Holt or anyone else we feature in these webinars, you can always email jumpstart at ck12.org. Um, they're sincere in their willingness to help. And we call, we call on these folks all the time and make digital introductions. And you know, if you're in a, in a school or district where you're thinking about getting started with Flexbooks, we are happy to connect you to these folks who've done it so you can learn from them because um, they're really proud of their work and they, they genuinely do want to get others um, started creating and sharing books. Uh, before I tell you about Tullahoma real quick, Star just got a ton of questions in the Q&A about the tiny URLs um, and about requesting your school. So again, that schools page, you have to elect to put your books on that site, but there is kind of one keeper of your school page. And 
the logical person to be the master keeper of your CK12 schools page might not be an individual teacher. Um, depending on your situation, you might need to escalate that to somebody in your district who would want to, you know, take ownership of that page and then you can put your book on there. But the tiny URL that we gave you, um, tinyurl.com, um, uh, was it CK12 claim your school? I've already forgotten. It's that catchy, I've forgotten. Um, that's also part of a, a help desk article that you're able to find um, if you search for how to get, how to get your books on there. Um, but that is a page that I've seen in schools. Some people use our schools page as the way that students and parents access books. Um, so it's, it's a way of sharing with other regions and districts, but it's also a way of, of getting your resources in the hands of your students easily if that's how you choose to do it. Um, Tullahoma, they're, they're another group of teachers that we think are doing phenomenal work and, and we talk about them quite frequently as well. But what's interesting about Tullahoma is that, you know, a lot of our users come to us for our STEM products, but uh, Tullahoma saw, saw the beauty of our platform. They started with language arts and with social studies and then went from there. So they didn't, they didn't really come to us for our STEM stuff. They said, you know, we're going to use, we're going to create some new books and we're going to use some open resources and we're going to, from scratch, create our content. Um, they've also localized it. I think Carl was telling you in his uh, getting started with Flexbook session that they, they have um, graduates from Tullahoma who've gone on to the Grand Ole Opry. So they love putting their photos and bios in the book and it's, it's a big source of pride and it ties into their state standards, which is awesome. Um, so if you're looking for a language arts book, I just told you, CK12 does not have, uh, you know, traditional language arts book. We have that common sense composition book that I showed you that may have some, some resources in there that you like, but you might check out Tullahoma's books because they have a bunch of English books and they're going to be littered with the Tennessee state standards. But since our books are customized, you customizable, you can get on there and you can add and change and delete anything that you would like. Um, we had the opportunity to visit Tullahoma and talk to them. And so we're just going to show just a, a, a couple of, you know, really short videos of, of the folks from Tullahoma telling you about their process. Yeah, I, th I think more accurately, concurrently with the devices, we had a push for OER. We spent some time at Rice University looking at the OpenStax program and we're really involved in a discussion that said we really wish we could find something like this for K-12 environment. As we started doing some research, ran across CK-12 and realized this is that missing link that we're looking for. This is something that will connect our devices to our kids with standards-based instruction that we think is valuable for them. So it, it really provided a, a sorely needed niche and connection that is invaluable for us. I, I think it's obviously the future for, for education. And I think that CK-12 is only gonna allow us to um, help to personalize and blend learning, which is, is the direction that our education program needs to head, not just tell them to see schools, but the nation as a whole. We need to offer what the kids need. We need to offer directly what the kids need, in addition to the adults as well. So. If we're not if we're not personalizing, you know, personalizing it using technology, then uh, we're falling behind. And and CK CK one two, it, it's one of those tools that that helps us uh, move forward. It's the great thing about CK twelve is they have a community contributed tab, so teachers are able to go access not only content that CK CK twelve has vetted, but also content that underground users have vetted or other districts have vetted. So teachers are able to go out and pull a textbook complete uh, match to the standards and they can start utilizing CK-12 today without a lot of investment on curating their own content. As they work through the textbook, the beauty of CK-12 is if they find some content that they want to add in addition to what CK-12 has provided or another district has provided, they can go and add that content as they go. So, so they are constantly developing their textbook as a living document the entire time they're teaching their curriculum. Our day when we do CK-12 or when we do a lesson in here starts with 
Google Classroom. That's where I put all of the lessons. I put all the links to CK12 there. They do have their own CK12 account and they do have the sixth grade textbook in their library and they can access it, any of the lessons, anytime from that particular place. The, the lessons follow the Tennessee state standards. Whatever I'm supposed to teach, that's what we wrote about and that's what we included in to meet those standards. We might have an activity that links to an outside source. I might have it just written in there. I might link to a video. But that's an everyday thing. We don't just sometimes use CK-12. We use CK-12 all the time, every day in some manner. Um, I'm here. It is not a get on the computer and just do your lesson without a teacher involvement because I handle this just like it's a textbook except it's on a computer. I use it more as a teacher resource instead of regularly assigning them chapters. I use it to house all of my instructional information and then I will piecemeal, um, piecemeal give it to them as I want them to have it. So for me it's like having all of my unit notebooks but ten times better because I can access it whenever I want and I can add all of those digital resources and access them wherever I need to. So those are just a few of hundreds of testimonials that we've collected from teachers and administrators across the country. Um, if you're interested in any of these, you can go to ck12.org slash testimonials. We've tried to give them um, effective titles, or you can also see the different positions um, of these folks if you're wondering what, uh, you know, what a principal would have to say, what a superintendent would have to say. Um, I know that some teachers also use these videos when introducing others to CK-12. Maybe if you're, you're pitching your administration, um, you could find some ammunition here on this page to help explain it. So the next thing that I want to discuss is finding community contributed content, um, whether it's STEM or non-STEM, through our search feature. So uh, let's go back live to our site and the transition time, here we go. Um, okay, so earlier I was using the search bar and we searched for photography. And I showed you that there are 24 results for photography on CK12 content. So the overlooked part of our site, because we actually do a fairly good job of hiding it, is this tab right next to CK12 content that says community contributed. If you've never searched for something and then flipped over to community contributed, I, I hope this is eye opening for you because this is where users like yourselves create these awesome resources and put it on our site because maybe it's included as part of your, your flex books or your lessons, you're pushing it out through an, through an LMS. Um, and put it back on our site. And so we can see that this was created by Steven. This was um, part of EPISD that I was just talking about their journalism book. Um, we keep the materials separate because as I said, we have CK12 curated, vetted. Our team you know, has taken ownership of that content. We keep it current. Um, community contributed content is you know we're, we're a little hands off on it this is your area where you guys can upload your content to share with others um, you are um, agreeing that you're using the appropriate licensing which i'll cover here in just a second so it's up to you to kind of click into these and vet how useful any of these materials are for you but if you're just trying to get started um, see what we have before you reinvent the wheel yourself um, that was for photography, but you can even, I mean, you can search for anything. You can search by subject like AP English. Again, not something that CK12 is going to have a whole lot of. Um, you know, this is just going to take you to our, our spelling book and our writing book. But if I go over to Community Contributed, you can see some different books here. Um, these are created by teachers. Uh, I've checked out this one before, Hacking into Literature, Life and Ourselves, a English and Lit and Comp book from 2015, 2016. Um, so you could open this up and see what you think, if there's any useful parts of the book that you wanna customize and take into your own book. That's, that's how the site, the site is designed for you to borrow from others and customize and um, continue to use those materials. You can also search, uh, like we keep talking about EPISD, you can also search by some different schools and districts 
and it would show up here as well as on our um, as on our schools page. On our main home page, I'm going to go back using the logo here to our home page. Under what are you looking for today, we have started this user contributed category over here and this is kind of new. We're going to continue to look through a bunch of the books and we're going to spotlight some of the stronger content. So this is still in my subject of photography that I'm, I'm searching here, but this is a digital imaging book. Um, you can check the details page, you can, you can, you can look into this. If you want this book um, to be part of a Flexbook 2.0 book, that is super easy to do. You can just add this um, to an existing book. Um, so start thinking about how you can mix and match all of your content to make that work together. Um, for any of you who are, who are using our Sims, um, if, I don't know if you were on the webinar this morning, but I think they talked about this for a second. If you go to our, to our browse page, I just cheated and pulled it up early, but this is, this is a Sim on going fishing. And as you go through the sim, you'd watch this video and you'd progress through, through the sandbox area, but eventually you'd end up on this tab, which is real, real world examples of this concept for the simulation. And this is CK12 content. This is what we've talked about. Okay, you've just gone fishing, but why does a peeled orange sink? How do fish change their density? If you click over to this community contributed tab, these are things our users have submitted. And in this case in particular, this was a challenge um, that a teacher passed on to their students. They said, okay, we just did this, this, this going fishing simulation. Now I want you guys to come up with extension activities. And so these were actually submitted by students to our page. Um, our team vets them to get them on this real world examples page on the simulations. And they end up here and the kids think they're rock stars because they've got published content on CK12 and it was an engaging activity in class. So I did want to just mention this community contributed at the end of um, the simulations because I, I think it's cool. Um, and then once again, this is the schools page or ck12.org slash schools. It knows I'm in California right now. Um, if my school is not here, that's when you're gonna email support and try to get your school on here. But I encourage you to uh, find El Paso. Um, actually, I'm just gonna go down to Texas. Like I said, this is a tiny, tiny portion of the books on our site because people do have to elect to put them on here. But El Paso wants you using their books. They're proud of them, they love them. So if you are teaching any of these subjects, um, like AP European History, sociology, their Spanish book they just created last year. Um, yeah, world history and English two Flexbook English one. I doubt you're gonna wanna use this book 100% as is. It's not gonna be perfect. It's not probably gonna fulfill all your needs, but does it get you 90% of the way there? And then you just find some of your other resources from open content that's license compliant. I mean, take their books, just open it up. Say, hey, I want EPISD's English one press customize, and then you're off and running and that book's gonna appear in your own library. So I'm gonna come up for air for a second and check in with Q&A. All right, so um, there, one thing I'll say, I know um, Liz, Lindsay just showed you a um, the Spanish one book from EPIST. They also have a Spanish two book and I would really pass links to those two books along to the Spanish teachers at your school or in your district because they are great foundational books that if they're looking for some digital content are a great place to go where they've written these books themselves and they're, they're really nice books. Um, there's another question on here about whether we're going to be creating simulations for biology concepts. And the goal is down the road, yes, that is our intention. We chose to do biology last because we feel like it's the hardest to simulate. That uh, we started with physics because it was the easiest, moved on to chemistry because it was about the molecules and we figured out how to do that. But now with biology, it's systems and things. So we're trying to figure out how to do that. And we wanted to make sure we kind of had enough knowledge to do, do it well. All right, so I think let's get started here on the next section. I'm going to go ahead and share the keynote and Lindsay, take it away. 
Well, I think you guys have seen some, some different ways to search our site for community contributed content that may serve as a starter flexbook for you. Um, but you're also able to start a book from scratch. Let's see, Carl's getting it going here. Uh, the next page is what I'm interested in. There we go. Um, so you can create a book on anything on our site. Um, this is a user who I was in this classroom uh, like a year and a half ago in Baltimore, and he was using our science content. His name is Dave Wessel. He's a CK12 certified educator. And he was saying, yeah, yeah, I use it for, for science, but I also coach lacrosse. And I was talking to the head lacrosse coach about how the platform would be perfect for our athletes to view the playbook, to watch game footage, it's something they can do on any device at any time. It's a way of organizing resources. You know, it's better than Dropbox or putting things on YouTube here and there. Like it is an organized, you know, playbook essentially for them with videos. And so I thought that was so cool. Um, and, you know, again, think of the possibilities. Um, I, I taught an IB course, IB film course um, for a few years in my old district. And I painstakingly used Google Docs to organize film clips and articles and critic reviews and film ter terminology. And I think if I had known about CK12 that there was this platform out there, I could have put all of that information because so much of it is public domain, you know, in that history part. I could have easily compiled my own book with original lesson plans. I could have embedded YouTube and Vimeo clips. I could have created some inline questions. And then I could have even had my students compile a book of their own film reviews. Because uh, don't forget, student accounts can also create their own books. So we all know about how important it is to like, you know, have an authentic voice and authentic audience and publish things of like, don't neglect the power of students creating their own resources on CK12. And we'll talk more about that in our teaching strategies session, um, the first one that we have tomorrow. So our platform is going to do what few other tools can, can do, and that's organize and push out content to any device. So in order to um, get our books started, um, Oh, no, go back, I think. Um, this is what you covered, I think, in getting started with Flexbooks, Carl. Yes. Um, so in getting started there, we discussed some of the best practices when editing books for teams of teachers. I'd like to review some of these things with you uh, that you might want to think about when working with non-STEM books from scratch. So form your curriculum teams is the first step. Kind of figure out who's going to be working on it. Assign one person to be the leader, and then create a flex book that you're going to work on in a school or district account that's not attached to any one person. So for example, if I was creating a Spanish 2 book, I might create a new email address in my district called Spanish at episd.org. And that way, if I leave the district, the Spanish book lives on and doesn't just live on in my personal account um, in the district. So then break up the work by chapter and uh, agree on a common style guide add in some original content or some open source content. What you really don't want to do though is take pictures and content from publishers materials because this would break the copyright license. They, they like making money on their content. So find content that is indeed open source like the EPISD book and make sure it complies with our CCBYNC license. Um, I'm speaking of that, oops. Some things just happened here. Um, speaking of that, I want to go through and, sorry, uh, talk about that license there. While CK12 is free, it's still under copyright. It's an open copyright, but none, uh, a copyright nonetheless. The most important parts of our Creative Commons copyright is that we require you to give us credit when customizing content and that you only use it for non-commercial purposes. And this is fancy language for please don't sell content that we gave you for free, okay? So if you created the content, you can use it. If you're using CK12 content, attribute it to us and don't sell it. If the content comes from a copyrighted flexbook, including from large publishers, you cannot include it in your flexbook. Okay? So this is, I know we're not lawyers. I know that the bottom line is we're used to being able to use anything in our classroom, but when you're putting it together in a book and sharing it with the world, you've got to make sure that it follows these um, copyright restraints. We frequently travel to 
Go Open Summits, which are conferences where districts are committed to using open educational resources. It's been a great place to find out more about using um, OER. Not surprisingly, over half the Go Open districts in CK, uh, use CK12 to meet that commitment. And I encourage everyone to go visit the open, uh, Go Open website and consider using their district launch packet as a guide. Go open is also an interesting one to follow on Twitter because um, there's lots of lots of hashtags. Go open OER. They will give you some great ideas about um, uh, about what it means to use open resources. So um, I just talked to you about creating a book from scratch, and um, I also want to talk to you just briefly about creating questions because we cover that in our customizing adaptive practice session. Um, but I think it's important here because if you're if you're creating books, you might also want to you know in, embed inline questions and create quizzes and whatnot. So just a, just a little review here of, we offer a variety of question types in our question builder. You can multiple choice, select all that apply, true, false, you know, all, all of the good options there for any questions you want to create. I'm gonna show you our question editor in a minute, but you can follow these steps to um, customize your question. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna pick a question type, and then of course you write the question. And then you add in answers, or if it's a multiple choice, you're going to add in all the incorrect answers too. You have the option to include a hint. You've seen how that works on our site with hints popping up. You can do that if you'd like. You can assign it an easy, medium, or hard um, difficulty level. You can add in additional question details, um, which uh, there's, I've got a slide on in a second. And then you can also use variables. This is more of an advanced skill and probably applies more to you math and science teachers about questions with variables. Uh, so the thing that I wanna call out um, in the question editor is this concepts box, because all of our questions, when you create a new question, it must be tagged to a concept. And since you may be creating questions for concepts that aren't math, science, or spelling, CK12 gives you the option to tag to a resource in your library. And I'm gonna share my screen and show you a quick demo of creating a book from scratch and writing your own questions, but keep that concept blank in line um, because it's important. And so let me share my screen and um, go back to CK12. And remember, we cover this in more detail in some of our other sessions. So this is probably more of a, a refresher than anything here. Um, your library from the menu option, your library is the place that houses your resources and things that you have customized. This is also a great place to create something new. So if you are wanting to create a new, um, a new modality just means if you wanted to create maybe like a lesson, a text lesson, you could do that on here. If you wanted to create a new Flexbook 2.0, you can use that option there or a new quiz. So in this case, why don't I go ahead and I'm gonna select a new Flexbook 2.0 to create new. And the first thing that it's gonna ask me to do is to give it a title. I'm gonna give it a really cool one like Lindsay's July 11 demo. And I can save my book. And so here it is, I've got my book started. Um, from there, I can always, always, always edit my book. This is a question that comes up a bunch of like, if I finalized it, if I saved it, can I continue to edit? And the answer is, of course you can. Um, so I'm gonna press edit the book. And I need some content. So uh, just a heads up, you can, you can change your image at any time here for your book cover if you'd like. Um, under add content, I can add a new chapter, I can add a new lesson, or I could pull from other CK12 material. Um, uh, I probably won't demo this too much. Um, I think you guys can imagine if I created a new chapter title here, it would show up and I could create um, new reads. And um, actually, let me take you to a new read for our demo here. Let's say I'm doing this one on film history. When you have our blank editor, I guess a few things that I think are, are helpful to, to all of our folks is that this insert image option to add in images, um, you need to be license compliant. I guess one site that I, 
I like personally, um, is a site called Unsplash. They're photos for everyone and they have an open um, license. It tells you all about why these are free. These are things that people have contributed. They just ask that you cite um, the author here, but these are kind of like classier stock images than some other sites. So you can find an image, you can download it. And then when you are back to um, your modality here, you would press insert image and you would find that image from your, from your desktop. So anything that you found that's license compliant, whether that's on Flickr or you're, or you're sorting through Google um, images and adding filters for which ones are license compliant, that's great. You can also use this multimedia box. You can pull embed codes from anything with an embed code. So we see that mostly for, you know, like a YouTube or a Vimeo video. Um, but all of the Google applications, everything from a Google spreadsheet, a Google sheet to like Google slides, there is an option to publish for web where within the Google application, you pull the embed code and you can put it into your um, Flexbook. So our book, it's, it's, just, it's just a blank slate for you to get, you know, to, to put in your exciting content. You can, you can host your own movies. Um, you would have to post it to YouTube first and then pull an embed code and put it into our site. Um, you can have student created resources that you put into your book. Um, all kinds of options here and starting from scratch. Uh, in our library, that's also a place where you can go and you can create a quiz. So I'm gonna do that. And again, if you attended the customizing adaptive practice, you saw how this worked where we added a question set from a math, science, or English concept because that's where we have our bank of 150,000 questions. But if I'm making um, language arts questions, I'm not going to find any of those for CK12. So I'm gonna need to create new questions here. I don't know if I'm going too fast or too slow, but again, this is, this is part of that customizing adaptive practice webinar as well. Um, this takes you to our question builder. And here you have the options to um, use the drop down to create different question types. So, um, if I wanted to add in, I, I'll sure I'll demo multiple choice question. So, um, in what decade was Romeo and Juliet written? Um, I can use my options here. This is this is a title of a play. I'm going to italicize it. Um, so you have you have options for editing there. I could insert an image, multimedia, anything you can do in your flexbook. You can pretty much do in your question as well. Um, you add in answers. It says to add the correct answer to start. Um, I know, what am I asking, decade? Um, this was in the 1590s. So then we'll give some distracting answers. Maybe they think it's 1570s, maybe it's the 1600s, or maybe it's the 16 and change is. Um, Full step-by-step -step solution. This is really important um, on a lot of math questions, but here you can add um, questions that will, or information that will pop up after they submit their answer. I could add a hint if I wanted. This question's a bad example for a hint. They either know it or they don't. Um, I think this is kind of an easy question. So I showed you earlier in the slide um that this add concepts this is key because you have to tag it to something it's not going to let you create a question unless it's tied to some resource on our site so for a lot of people that is hey i know that this is on the pythagorean theorem i know that this is on the water cycle um, they could find a concept from ck12 but uh ck12 doesn't have a concept on romeo and juliet so I need to have something in my library that I have put in there, something that I've created that I can find to tag this to. So I'm gonna click on search my library. And it's gonna think about it or not. Uh, maybe I need to type something in first, like uh, William, and spell it correctly, Shakespeare. Oh no, this is gonna be this is this is gonna be the demo that's that's that doesn't doesn't do what I want it to do. Let's try this again. I'm not trying to search a CK12 concept. I'm trying to search my library. Shakespeare. 
Oh, 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 it just popped up. It just popped up. There we go. Okay, so I guess I told it that I wanted to find it in my library. I wasn't being patient enough with the system. I'm sorry. Um, this is a resource in my library that's called William Shakespeare Facts. And now my question is tied to that resource. So it may not make like the, the, the rationale behind why this needs to happen may not make a whole lot of sense, but procedurally just remember that you can tag any non-STEM concept, concepts to something in your library. And um, the, the thing in your library, um, if I go to my library, you'll see this is the book that I just created, um, but here was that William Shakespeare facts read that was in my library. So my question's now tied to that. Uh, so we've covered quite a bit today. I'm interested in what, what we didn't cover that you guys were hoping to get out of this webinar on non-STEM and community contributed content. I'm hoping that you, you know, can find the schools page. You can find other regions, um, you know, people who are working on content similar to your interests. Oftentimes on these webinars, people are able to partner up. If somebody volunteered, I'm working on a, you know, uh, a book in a certain subject that somebody else can say, I'd like to partner with you on that. So um, just, just keep these things in mind. Um, Carl, are we, do we have any pending questions? Actually, what I have to share with everybody out there is that the funniest thing just happened when it didn't work on Lindsay's computer here. She looked over at Star going, why isn't this working? And Star gave her a, I have no idea, look and passed it back to her. So yes, it was a fun moment. But yes, it did finally come up and it worked beautifully. Um, yeah, and the only thing I would add to this, Lindsay, is everyone should be developing all their non-STEM concept content in the Flexbook 2.0 platform because as we add more intelligence features, even non-STEM content will be able to take advantage of these features. So, you know, we are really excited about all the things on the drawing board currently. So please um, don't just develop in the 1.0 original Flexbook um, platform, but develop things in the new platform, okay? And again, your, your program book is a model of this. Uh, this is, this is non-STEM content. We created something new on CK12. We did exactly that. We went to create new, create a new Flexbook 2.0 and then started um, building out our chapters and our lessons and creating our own quizzes and putting them on the site. So you are able to set up the exact same experience um, in your own classrooms. Great. Well, so we are just going to wrap this up now. We will stay on and answer any um, other remaining questions, but let's go ahead and give you the final thoughts here. Um, the one thing I don't know if you're um, doing is please go to ck12.org slash forums into the Jumpstart for Educators discussion forum. And there's lots of great conversations that are happening right now. And we really want you to be thinking about this as a great resource, not just support at ck12.org, but let me go find out from my peers using CK12 how they're using it. And to me, this is a place you should be going to daily to kind of see what's happening and what's going on. All right. Um, remember, we have a great opportunity for you to network by going to the CEP alumni page and just go to the CEP page and click CEP alumni. And you're going to see a whole list of people for your state that have done CK-12 um, Certified Educator Program or internationally, and you can see who's near you. You'll notice that some of them have a little um, envelope icon, as if we all send um, envelopes to people, but it reminds you that they would love you to reach out to them via email. Um, also, remember, we really want you to partner with us. Please pilot our new Common Core Flexbook 2.0s and other books that we're making. Give us feedback on them. Let us know. Use our practice. Practice is really the secret sauce, I always say. And um, our quizzes, too. Create your own quizzes on CK12. And then, you know, figure out how in your school and district you can adopt CK12 as the full curriculum. Because of its intelligence, the more you use it, the smarter it becomes. You'll be also creating new Flexbook 2.0s for non-STEM subjects like all of you have been seeing today. Um, invite other people to um, use CK12 and show it to your friends. And then, of course, 
um, share feedback, and even if you have efficacy, if you can share how your students are doing and you've watched their math scores go through the roof, because of CK12, we'd love to know that. Uh, remember, just email us at jumpstart at CK12 to get started. Um, we've got some sessions coming up um, to end out this week. Tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock California time, I'll be walking you through teaching strategies for using CK12. And I think it's, it's the most practical um, of our sessions that we're doing because it's stuff you can use in your classroom on the first day using CK12. Um, and then we have customizing CK12 adaptive practice and assignments where you'll learn how to really make our adaptive practice system work specifically for your class. Um, as always, the uh, resource guides are available using the tiny URL. It's also listed in your, um, in your Flexbook 2.0 for the course. Please give us your feedback. Um, the more feedback you give us, the better we become. Um, and I, I'm surprised we're not getting as much feedback as I would like. So, Today, if, if you guys can at least go on there and let us know specifically on this session what we could have done better and what you loved, it really is useful. And then, of course, complete the assignment there. So from all of us here at the um, CK12 World Headquarters, we're encouraging you, as always, to go tweet out about today's session. Be sure to tag CK12 Foundation. Also use the hashtag CK12 Certified. Um, so let's take a look here. Any final questions that we need answered? Um, looks like we are there. So at this point, I, we say thanks so much for spending the afternoon, evening, morning with us. And we look forward to another day tomorrow of CK12 knowledge happening. That's all. Thanks a lot.